Welcome, everybody. So uh, the next presentation will be around the Kubernetes and cross-plane. And we'll have 35 minutes. Uh, if you have questions at the end, we'll try to take them as well. And if you're watching online, push, uh, push the questions as well via the chat. So we'll, uh, we'll try to get those as well. So the floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Do I have to do anything? No. Sounds like we're here. Oh my god, this is awesome, right? Uh, we're back. I've heard 7,000. I didn't make the keynote this morning, but I heard that 7,000. So are you all excited to be back in, 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 in person? I had so many, <laughs> woo, so many awesome conversations already. It's like, yeah, you, get, you can do this virtually, but then you, know, you do it back in Slack, and it's like, I'm actually meeting persons for the first time. It's like I'm actually trying to map the Zoom window around them to recognize them. So all, first of all, it's awesome that you're all here. We're super excited to talk about it. And there's one thing that I've done in the past and I haven't been doing since, I don't know, a gazillion years, is a selfie with the audience. So if you, I know, you know, it's like getting up, but, but if you could like a little bit of like show your pure enthusiasm while we do the, do the selfie. With you folks. All right. Are you are you are you there? Hello. Yeah. Woo! Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks a lot for coming. Um, uh, so uh, I'm Matthias. This is Tobias. Going to introduce him in a minute. Uh, super excited to talk about our our you know things that we've been doing um, in the last uh, you know last little bit. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, digital twins. Uh, that we're building. It's a nice, fun concept. And, you know, being Kubernetes and crossplane nerds, like it was obvious, that's, that's the only technology solution that you can find for doing these. Uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, one sentence about myself. I'm uh, Matthias um, out of Germany and working for a small company called Upbound. Um, and we're uh, the uh, major contributor behind crossplane. So, you know, Come by, grab a sticker, hit our booth, uh, and happy to talk all things about crossplane. This conversation, what we do here, or you know, general building building platforms. And uh, yeah, and another note, I want to see you all for a beer later. Uh, so stop by. I want to cheers with everyone, every single one of them. Cool. Tobias. So yeah, now uh, Matthias is done selling your stuff, so I can geek out. Uh, my name is Tobias Anderson. I work for DFDS. We are a Danish logistics company, uh, been around for quite a while. And about a year and a half ago, I started looking at cross-plane as a way to manage some of our, we had a lot of requirements for setting up some service brokers for a lot of our cloud native workloads. And we sort of stumbled onto to cross-plane. And from there on, it just became a, a love story that have led to this point where now Matthias is my BFF. You know, we talk every day on Slack. We call each other on Zoom. He doesn't need to remember the frame to see my face. He dreams about me every day. Mm -hmm. And hopefully within, you know, a few years, we will be able to get to a point where we can try to frame some sort of subset of crossplane that can deal with the concept of digital twins. Because digital twins has been on our roadmap as an organization for over five years now. If any of you work for other logistics companies, you will probably know that you've also been looking into these things because the future is automation. And in order to facilitate this automation, we need digital twins to sort of interact as emissaries on our behalf in, in cyberspace. So uh, a little bit about uh, our agenda today. Uh, first, we're going to give you uh, a big picture talk of what this digital twin concept is all about. In my world, it's still very undefined. There are many different views on it. But slowly, we are getting to some sort of consensus, and hopefully the, the tooling will follow along and make it a lot easier. Then we will, uh, Matthias will talk about our use cases. Uh, I will talk a bit about what we, or how we view digital twins internally in DFDS and, and how we work with them. And then uh, Matthias will go through a demo that we prepared on how we could potentially go about building uh, digital twins uh, with crossplane and Kubernetes. So uh, moving on to the big picture, at some point in time, there was somebody who sent a spaceship into space called Apollo 13. And um, in order to fix that mess, they ended uh, up building some mirrored systems to salvage Apollo. And that was sort of the uh, 
genesis of digital twins as we know it. And then we can uh, move forward to uh, the 90s where a guy from Procter & Gamble was like, yeah, Internet of Things is a thing. And that sort of started that uh, whole uh, ride. And then eventually Michael Grieve started uh, discussing the theory of, uh, of digital twins at, at university uh, level. And over time, industry started coming in, and HP started working with, uh, I, I can't remember who it was, um, but they started actually building some of the first digital twins, and then NASA eventually coined the term uh, digital twin in a report that they put out there. And now we're at a point where, looking at the audience, uh, we are clearly uh, seeing growing interest for the concept of digital twins. I think all of us uh, will, within the next five to 10 years be working with that concept in one way or the other as we help our different businesses on board this whole industry 4.0 uh, what the fuck thing. Um, so yeah, but moving on, um, essentially for us, from our point of view, a digital twin is a digital representation of a physical asset. In our world, that could be a vessel like a ship or a truck. Uh, it could be a trailer. Uh, it could also be a sensor for that matter. And uh, the, the thing with digital twins is that they mimic the behavior of the physical asset so we can interface with it digitally in real time and thus do course correction if our truck is about to hit some person in a terminal area or whatnot, right? And this then bridges into the whole realm of 3D game engines and so on, because how do you do collision detection between things based on events, right? You need something to run the math. And we're not quite there yet, but right now we're focusing on sort of the taxonomy within everything, and then hopefully over time we will get more mature. Uh, we also uh, uh, sort of uh, view uh, digital twins as a digital control plane uh, for the physical world. At the end of the day, this is about controlling robotics and, and machinery and manufacturing plants and so on. Uh, but we want these twins to be able to do that in a secure, encrypted manner, uh, manner obviously. And uh, the idea with digital twins might go as far as to say that when I buy my Nike Air sneakers, maybe Nike will spawn an instance of a digital twin that will follow that shoe from cradle to grave and you know, keep track of where it was and if it got resold to others and so on. So this is for us you know, at a high level what a digital twin is. And uh, if you can move on to the next one, if we try to put that into context of a manufacturing plant, you have uh, robotics. This is one aspect of what goes into it. So the ability to have an Im embedded system that can move you know, an arm based on commands. We have cloud computing services. They give us uh, access to uh, scale and geolocation things and so on. Then we have the whole big data thing, right? Because our digital twins are inherently stupid. They need to learn over time. This is where big data fits in to, to teach these twins to become more aware about their surroundings and thus create even better simulations. And then we have the wireless uh, technology that makes this all work, right? Because in our world, we you know, have ships trying to you know, bridge an ethernet cable to a ship in motion is impossible. So it's either satellite or something like that, right? And the last part is then the embedded systems that we often have like a sensor, which will have a one-to-one -one relationship to its digital twin. And then the ship will often be an aggregate of, of twins, but I'll get into that a bit later. And obviously the reason why we as DF is doing this is because our world looks very much like this, but we know that at some point within like five, 10, maybe 20 years, the world will look like this, right? And then all of a sudden, we will have to figure out a way to uh, manage these uh, digital assets as they move around because in cyberspace, there are no ships, right? There's just a lot of sensor data that makes up a thing and then you have some 3D grids and so on. And then it's like you start understanding that in reality, you know, when you're dealing with this concept, it's kind of like the matrix, right? It's, uh, it's not the spoon that bends, it's you that bend. And then you start reframing your, your thoughts and start saying, okay, well, maybe the ship doesn't really exist in my system. It's just a collection of sensors that are controlled by some sort of aggregate that can manage this. Uh, so that is sort of the, the big picture. And then I guess I'll hand it over to you, Matthias, to just uh, talk a bit about our use cases. Yeah, so if we're talking about like these digital twins and these sensors, right, you, there's, you know, a gazillion use cases uh, that, that you can think of. Um, and obviously, me not, not being like too deep into the, uh, to the domain, like, you know, we figured out 
a couple of initial use cases that we that we that we wanted to support. So I'll I'll walk you through these. So the first one um, is obviously uh, you know the trailers um, and making sure that um, we are reducing CO2 emissions. Um, you know it's not not only an, a, a general good thing to do, uh, but obviously also from a fuel consumption perspective, you know uh, something the FDS strives for. Uh, there is a lot of you know integrity that needs to be you know uh, considered. Cold storage being one of them, like making sure that if there is a container that has a certain um, uh, 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 guarantee of, of how, how the temperature is, you know, DFDS wants to ensure it and make sure that this is also being, you know, um, uh, ensured to, to the customers. Uh, we want to also do some predictive uh, maintenance, right? Like, you know, working with sensors, there is a lot of, you know, machine learning involved to understand eventually uh, when something needs to go into maintenance. And obviously, you know, global uh, supply chains tracking. On the shipments itself, so, you know, we're talking like really different perspectives here. It doesn't look good. Did you just lose connection? I don't Logistic? know. Oh. Here we are. All right. Uh, so, um, on the, uh, um, so when we're talking about digital twins in different areas, and I'll go, go into that a little bit deeper later, but we're diff really talking about different aspects, right? So we're talking about vessels, but we can also talk about shipments. So here we want to uh, reduce the fuel consumptions. We want to have we want a management of these IoT devices, um, and you know do some simulation. But we can go further, right? We, we've got we've got the uh, the vessels, we've got the ships, but now now we're on the terminals, right? And again, right? There's lots of things things moving around. Things are monitored with different um, IoT devices. And you know we want to support the automation of terminal processes. We'll optimize the utilization of new facilities, increase the productivity of, of individual personnel, um, and generally again leverage the data to reduce uh, energy consumption. Um, on the vessels and the trucks itself, um, there is uh, uh, some uh, cooperation with Volvo uh, that the FDS is doing. Uh, and really, really fancy, fancy uh, auto autonomy stuff, but um, they're working together, right? So there, there needs to be some interoperability uh, between, these, uh, between these vessels and trucks. Um, uh, the ownership, uh, it might not only be uh, the shoes, right? It might also be other things that, that wants to have a digital ownership. Um, and with the autonomous stuff, uh, we, you know, enable remote control of these systems is obviously a you know, interesting topic to, to look into. Mm -hmm. So this is like, you know, the use cases, but let's, let's, there's, there's actually some concepts behind digital twins, which uh, will, uh, Tobias will, will explain. Mm. So um, <clears throat> basically the, the way that we have viewed the concept and initially tried to, to implement, implement a POC around it was that for us, you know, the digital twin sits in between the real world and our control plane applications, right? So we have business people operating things on their smartphones or their laptops or whatnot, and then we, they interface with the digital twin, and the digital twin is then tethered to a device using secured communication, right, with certificates and stuff like that. And thus, it becomes this sort of gateway to, to talk to the, to the real-world sensors. And this enables all these uh, different use cases like uh, co-ownership or, you know, moving stuff around or reacting to uh, sensor data or whatnot in real time to optimize workloads or optimize fuel consumptions and so on. Uh, and the way that we sort of then reason about it, if you can move to the next slide, Matthias, is that as such, you know, the embedded systems offer this digital tether in the physical world, right? So it's basically something that the digital twin can mount on and take control of. The digital twin itself sits in between, uh, and then you have the applications over on, on the right. Can you just move to the next slide? That's fine. I've been through this already, so just move on to the next one. Uh, and in general, the way that we've tried to reason about this architecturally is that, that there's like, seems to be three different concepts at play here. The first concept is what we call the digital twin prototype, and this is really 
the work that goes into researching how a specific digital twin should be implemented. So this is not just a coding job, it's not just some infrastructure thing, it's really talking with business, understanding how does a vessel operate, what sensors are on the vessel, who are the different parties that might interact with said vessel, and how can we then go about implementing this in a way where we can first simulate things and then maybe later, you know, start bridging it into actually controlling the vessels because initially I think a lot of this, if you look at what NASA is doing now with funding a US startup with 30 million dollars is to be able to simulate satellites and or simulate satellites in orbit so they don't have to actually fire it up there to figure out if it's going to work right. Uh, and the prototypes, they are used to explore this thing in virtual reality, right? So we have at our place, we've done quite a lot of work on doing 3D modeling around our terminals. This will open up for us being able to interface with this in both VR and AR. Uh, and essentially that gives an extra dimension to the digital twin because it becomes much more physical in a sense, right? It's just not this service running in the background. It could actually manifest itself in virtual reality if it needed to. Uh, the uh, prototype itself is not linked to any actual asset. It's more meant like a abstract class or a template or something like that for you to sort of look at if you have to implement a, a given twin. Uh, and the explicit states of these things makes it easier to, to create modular systems because I think at the end of the day you need high modularity for digital twin architectures to be really successful because they're going to be pieced together from all sorts of different suppliers, right? Siemens will have sensors, uh, you know, other big companies will have sensors and then we have to then fit it into our Kubernetes stack with Crossplane and we use .NET Core for programming at our company, but you know, other people use Java. So there's going to be a lot of work around making all this work. Um, the next concept that we work with is the actual instance itself. And we like to say that, that the instance is very simple because the instance is just the tether between a service and its corresponding sensor. And in general, there should always be a one-to-one -one relationship between this. And the idea is that the instance is linked to a unique physical asset, for instance, my uh, Nike, Air Force, whatever. Um, they're associated with that most one prototype to make it uh, easy. And they rely heavily on eventual consistency and they need huge amounts of data to actually provide any real value for us over time, right? Because I worked for many years before joining DFDS with uh, Erstel and their machine learning division of 60 people. They spent millions of kroner sort of trying to figure out where all of this was headed and they found that for them predictive maintenance was the, good, the big thing uh, because they had like a terabyte of data coming in and as they started sort of analyzing this, they, they started becoming capable of building uh, systems that could predict that if a grain of sand in a windmill engine uh, started making a certain sound frequency, then within three months that grain of sand would make a two-inch fur on the vessel that would break the engine, right? So this is the, the, the essence of what we want to get to is these sort of instances that can tell us that, hey, now you need to go clean your windmill engine in a, or your ship needs this or your trailer is leaking so the temperature seal is no longer valid, which will destroy the COVID vaccines. Uh, the last thing is then the thing that doesn't really exist, right? This is the aggregate, this is the vessel. Uh, in essence, the aggregate is simply just uh, a collection of twins, right? So if you think about a DFDS ferry or a ship, we have like uh, sensors for weather, we have sensors for fuel, but we also are now introducing electronic door locks on our cabins, right? That means that when truckers, they come in and park their, their, their truck, we could issue a digital key card for them that would allow them to control that specific thing. And that means that the ship as a whole is the spoon, right? It, it's not, it doesn't really exist, but it kind of exists. It's just the sum of its parts. And uh, the idea with the aggregates is that they have direct access to all the sensors that they are uh, sort of uh, composed of. And thus often you can look at the aggregate as the I don't know, gateway or the control plane or whatnot. Uh, but the idea is that it works as a, as a mechanism for, for, to facilitating uh, command and control. So let's say you wanted to reboot all your sensors on a ship. Obviously having to connect to each sensor individually would require a lot of work. Having a gateway where you just say, you know, reboot all the sensors on the ship is a lot easier. 
so, so these are sort of the three cardinal concepts that, that we've been working with. And then Matthias and I have been sort of trying to fit that into the cross-plane architecture. And here I will let uh, Matthias continue. Yeah, so um, I guess that's the, the, the question where you need to show hands. Who is familiar with cross-plane? All right, the rest come to our booth afterwards, right? We need to talk. So, um, no, cross-plane, um, maybe, yeah, let's start with Kubernetes. Uh, so, so first of all, uh, Kubernetes uh, has been coined, you know, again and again as a platform for building platforms, right? So, you know, when Tobias was looking into this um, and we talked about it, it was pretty obvious, you know, you know, Kubernetes being being a good good platform for building this. And this is like, first of all, just the general concept um, of this declarative model and this constant reconciliation, right, of, of just making sure that the uh, desired state is, is actually matching the uh, actual state. Um, that, that was just a concept that, that matched very well the distributed problems that, that, that we looked into. Obviously with Kubernetes and you, you tried to, you, you saw some of these hints, right? The, uh, our control plane, so the things that are managing all these, right? They used to be, they need to be running everywhere, right? They need to be running on the ships, on the terminals, maybe in actually in a container itself. So it's like, you know, there's a gazillion ways of, of, of it, Kubernetes needs to, is everywhere, and it needs to be everywhere for, for, our, for our setup. Now, last but not least, right, Kubernetes, and you know this better, right, being at this conference, there's a gazillion tools out there. And that's obviously great, right, because you don't need to reinvent everything, right? You need to, you know, apply standards, standard interfaces, but afterwards you can, you know, just, you know, use tools, right? And I, I'm, I've named a few here. It doesn't really matter. The, the, the point is, as you're building up this platform, right, you can start, you know, uh, stitching building blocks together uh, that would work. So Kubernetes was a, was a get-go. It uh, was a pretty, you know, we, from the get-go, we, we knew we wanted to do it. So the next step was, was cross-plane. So cross-plane in my world are two things. First of all, um, it's a way of getting a cloud API into Kubernetes, right? So you can think of like any cloud service that you want to manage, and now you, you have that cloud service in your, uh, in your Kubernetes cluster. So not only creating the deployment for creating, uh, uh, for, for creating your application, but you also have like a CR or a CRD that describes a database in the cloud, right? Or uh, a database with a couple of other things uh, stitched together. And you can basically just create this. So there's this one-to-one -one mapping and in Crossplane we call these managed resources and you can just like hack away in Kubernetes, really fun. Now the next thing uh, what Crossplane does is that it allows to compose multiple of these managed resources into some abstraction. The usual uh, way uh, of how we see this applied is for developer platforms. So there is some abstract interface for some databases. It defines some abstract um, uh, properties like small, medium, whatever, right? And you can, a, a developer can just create the database and behind the scenes there is you know, something in AWS, GCP, Azure, whatnot, on-prem uh, build up, but the developer wouldn't really know. So these are like you know, the rough concepts and I don't know if you kind of like, you know, getting like talking about digital twins, you kind of already see some of, some, some of that alignment. So here's an example, right? A simplified example, obviously, but you know, we talked about the, the, the terminal, right? And on these terminals, there's a couple of, you know, there's trucks on there and there are ships. Um, and you know, they obviously, you know, uh, contain or have containers on board. So if we think about it and we take one, one of it, uh, oh yeah, and by the way, uh, that's the barcode for, uh, the QR code for, for the example. Um, and I've just updated uh, two hours before uh, the presentation, I've updated the example, let's see if it still works. Um, so, but um, as an example, right, we have a, a, a composition. So, so we have the ship thing, right, which we want to use. And as Tobias said, it contains of multiple IoT devices, multiple sensors. So um, here's just a, a couple of examples, like a GPS sensor, fuel sensor, weather sensor. There could be, could, could, you know, uh, a gazillion. 
And what we're going to see in a minute is that, you know, we compose all these together into a composition. Um, and that composition is actually, on how I say it, implementing it, a, a an, uh, definition, an API that we can then later, uh, later use. So, and we've been arguing about this, right? So this is not the next slide. So we definitely need to come back in Detroit to talk about it again. But uh, I like to think about it, you know, as, you know, the, um, uh, the definition of these things is a prototype, right? Uh, the XRD is the prototype. The actual composition of these different sensors together um, are the, is the aggregate. And the digital twin instance is actually the single ship that uses us all these, these sensors. But again, we're walking through different, different models. This is how, how I'm going to show it in a minute. All right, so where are we on time? We've got... I think we're good to we're, go. We're good to go? Demo, right? yeah, all right, so go ahead and, uh, let me... Uh, see if you can fail fast so we can uh, get moving. All right, can you see still my screen? Is the, is the font okay? Was that a no or yes? All right. All right, where, where are we? No ships, no ships in here. All right, so basically what I have is a local kind cluster with um, a cross plane installed, right? Nothing, nothing, really, nothing really fancy. Uh, you can install cross plane um, and, and, and you need to talk, uh, install a couple of providers and I'll, I'll, I'll show in a second what it is. But uh, with a plane, uh, cross-plane installed and with, with a provider installed, we've got a couple of CRDs here that are new to the system. First of all, it's about uh, cross-plane itself. So you see here a couple of cross-plane itself. But if you, if, you, if you take a close look, there's already a new CRD here, uh, GPS types, which I'm going to show you in a second, which are the managed resources which a provider did, um, did provide us. Um, and I can get the providers here. All right, so we've got, I've got two providers, a GPS and a no-op provider, just you know, for, for the example um, of, of what I'm showing. All right, so in my, in my um, uh, platform here that I've defined, I've basically defined a container, a ship, a terminal, and a truck, et cetera. So let's install these, right? So you can think of like, okay, so far it's just plain Kubernetes and some little bit more runtime, and let me install, uh, let me install a platform, right? And now, all of a sudden, what we, what we have are a definition of, of our domain model, right? We've got, we've got ships, containers, terminals, trucks, but not, not only the definition, but how they are made up. So um, I can show, maybe, I'm not sure if this works, ships XRD. I think I should have loaded, right? So this is, this is a, a cross-plane definition, right? Uh, so what, 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 is a, what is a ship, right? This is our, our definition of it. Um, it basically, you know, there's some metadata on how this is called in different, different perspectives. There's a way of how to represent it, which, which you will see in a second. But most importantly, um, it has the API definition, how to interact with it, right? And this is, is it's just a ship and the um, IMO, which was uh, Mediterranean organization, international Mediterranean organization, something. It's an ID to find that ship, right? So, um, da, 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 da. I applied these CRDs, right? So, so uh, I'm not sure if we did, did we look. Yeah. So we've also got, had a, have, have a couple of new CRDs. That's up and running. All right. So let's have let's have actually some some ships uh, uh, installed. So uh, just, you know, you can look at these ships, right? So there's, you know, pretty, you know, pretty simple YAML, right? You have a spec that defines a ship with an IMO here. We have containers with some IDs, terminals, yada, yada. Nothing, nothing too fancy. But before we install them, right, let's, 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 let's look at these, right? So up here, right, we've got terminals and ships. And so far, none of these terminals and ships have been installed. Right, there's, there's none, right? There's no, currently, currently our current control plane doesn't manage any of these, right? So let's, let's install some. And what you see now is that there's uh, new ships, new terminals and ships are coming up, right? 
So we've got a couple of terminals in Norway, Belgium, yada, yada, and we've got a couple of ships. And we also have, and, and you should have seen this, right, the, the different positions of these ships. So these are these different managed resources, these different sensors, these different GPS devices. And as the you know, sensor picks it up, it propagates it up to the ship, and now we can, we, now we can work with it. Right? So we've got six ships here. One is in Hamburg, one is in Copenhagen. Surprise. Um, and you, know, you, can, you, can now, you can now work with it. Right? And the G GPS sensor is just one sensor in this demo. But you can like, think about like, very other sensors in, in, in also, right? Like the fuel sensor or uh, the weather sensor that interact and that you can work with, inspect, and use in your platform as, as you go. All right. Um, what, what else? So um, you, know, you, can, you can query for different things, right? So um, you know you can query query for all the terminals in Denmark. You know that's that's pretty pretty simple. There's only currently one. Um, if you um, if you you know just you know have your standard Kubernetes rate, maybe maybe your you know terminal output is not as nice. So the trucks are here. Maybe I actually want to know a little bit more. And then you know you do different queries, and now I can get all the trucks that are are in Copenhagen. Um, but you know. A digital twin, one of it is, is showing the APIs uh, or making sure that all the sensors data is actually updated um, uh, and shown in the control plane, right? So if, if, if the GPS is updated, now the, 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 um, the ships are currently not moving. <laughs> um, that's A, because they're not moving, and B, because it's a dummy provider and there's no actually GPS divided. But you can imagine that this is you know, actually, you know, continuously updated. But you, with a digital twin, you want to interact, right? You don't only want to see the updates, but you actually want to interact. So, you know, just, just as a, you know, simple, simple example, um, you know, if, if, if the, if the um, actual terminal is represented as a label, what we could do, um, you know, is just simply update that the Humber Viking ship is going to Hamburg now, right? So we can basically just change the desired state uh, to, to Hamburg. Now, uh, you know, we t I talked with Dan a little bit about it, and he said, like, you know, maybe we should, we don't, we should actually create a policy that actually updates this. So this is, like, for our next demo, uh, uh, the update. It but it's, uh, you know, it shows the idea of, of, of where we're going. So to, to be says I should keep it up. Um, I should keep the time. We have keep the time. three minutes left. Three minutes left. All right. So the, the last thing that I'd like to say, I'm just going to leave that up here, right? You can obviously take these CRDs and move it to another Kubernetes cluster, right? They are the digital twin, the, the representation, and you can manage it from that Kubernetes cluster, but you can also move it to another Kubernetes cluster. This is just a very simple example, but you, you, know, you can obviously, you know, we talked about tools, there are probably other tools that you can work with. It's just CRDs, right? That's all. Cool. Cool. Uh, thank you, Matthias, for a, a brilliant uh, demonstration. I have one more slide just to go through before we finish off and take a few questions. Uh, as we've been working through this for the last maybe three to six months, you know, we've come to uh, some conclusions that we hope we can share with the audience if you are considering this. Uh, it's still very early days. There's going to be you know, a long period of trying to overcome technology and people challenges in order to make this a success. Uh, they will benefit greatly from the abstraction because <clears throat> one of the things that truly inspired me for this was the uh, U.S. Army Strike Fighter, Fighter Project where they made, you know, an air-gapped Kubernetes installation inside the plane. So if we think about each vessel having its own cluster, moving a workload from one cluster to another represents the transfer of said asset from a ship to a terminal or from a terminal to a truck and so on and so forth. And that really provides a lot of out-of-the-box functionality for us in terms of tracking our stuff. Uh, and they can easily provision things with, uh, with cross-plane, right? So if I move my twin from one geolocation to another, 
It can have different you know, strategies for either just remounting the cloud resource or moving that to another geographical location. If the RDS that this specific twin needs is too far away and that causes latency or whatnot. And these are, I think, the next steps in our journey to try to look at how can we implement policy engines, how can we implement even more command and control logic within the twins themselves so they can be more responsive and, and you know, do the Hollywood-style callback so we don't constantly have to pull them, but they will you know, push us. And I think maybe Mauritius in the audience has been doing some great work on event-enabling cross-plane. And Matthias and I also want to try and build on that because we see that as an absolute essential thing for, for this to succeed. Uh, we also did some fun work with Asia IoT Hub that you can find here. This was the initial POC I did uh, before Matthias and I started out. And I think with that, we will conclude our talk and uh, we will leave it for the audience to ask questions or meet us outside. Or so one, so there's, there's, a one, or, yeah, there's one thing to take, I, I'd, I'd like for you to take away, right? Uh, Crossplane is just about using some API, right? And we're talking about IoT devices. So the question for you is like, what API are you managing? Might be a cloud, might be a cloud and something else. How can I combine this and manage with, with Crossplane? Um, and that's, that's like, you know, get that into your head and then, you know, see, see what other nice examples uh, we have. And yeah, do we, do we have time for question? Let's say two questions. Any questions? All right. Is the mic on? I can repeat the question if it's not on. Do we have a 3D representation? We have Unity models of our terminals and stuff, but unfortunately I didn't have time to source them for the presentation. So hopefully when we go to KubeCon in North America, we will have those things available also. All right. There's another question. Uh, do you also use Crossplane to provision other Kubernetes clusters or just for this API? So uh, that's a great question. So generally, you know, Crossplane is about, you know, talking to any kind of API. And if you're, if you're a Kubernetes developer, the first thing that you reason about is other Kubernetes resources and then also other Kubernetes clusters. And yes, the answer is yes, we generally do this. We do this for specific cloud uh, clusters like an EKS cluster, but also generic, generic Kubernetes clusters, yes. So both. Uh, one more question. I have noticed that you have uh, your own custom provider. Yes. How can you build such one if I want to? Yeah, there's a gazillion ways. Thanks, Sammy, for the question. But there's, there's a gazillion ways to build providers. Um, I've just hacked it all along. And that's the other thing, the nice thing, what, what I love about CNCF and open source projects, you can build these, right? And I'm not, I'm a, a product manager, so I'm not like this most seasons Go developer, but I got, it by, I got it running. So you can just build it on your own. There's like nice templates. But you can also generate one. Uh, there's different generator types that you can like use different sources where you can generate one. So there's different different possibilities to create one. Cool. I All think right. we'll, we'll need to, to cut it here. All uh, right. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, you. You, you find us at the, the, the different booth, at the crossband booth, the napbound booth. If you want to grab a sticker, there are stickers up here. Have a great conference. And I will see you for a beer. Thank you.